Hello guys, gals, and envies. Let's make this thing in touch designer today. This is a stretch attractor. Specifically, a Thomas attractor. A cyclically symmetrical mathematical pattern. Strange attractors are really cool. The closest thing we have to any sort of sacred geometry. I encourage you to read about about strange attractors, and specifically, the Lorenz system. It's very interesting. Now, this looks a little bit daunting. We might think that we will need GLSL to make this. But we can actually make this entirely in tops. Well, we can't actually make it on a computer at all, because this assumes that delta time is infinitesimally small. But we can get more than close enough. Let's take a look at it. From a fresh project. I'm just going to type this into a text DAT, so we can reference it more easily. First, we have our variable B, and we want this value for now. Then we have delta x, divided by delta time, is equal to sine of y, minus b times x. Same for the delta y, but it is the sine of z. And the same for z, but it's the sine of x. But what we want to know here is the change in position, the delta x, y, z. So we can forget about the delta time for now. And just remember to multiply it by that later. So, what does this look like in tops? At first we need some points. We can use a noise top for that. Set it to 32-bit float red green blue alpha. Noise type is random. Amplitude 1. Offset 0. Monochrome off. We now have some scattered points between negative 1 to 1. Let's connect this to a null, and start calculating our delta positions. I'm going to split the channels with a reorder. And set it to 32-bit float mono. So all the values we care about are in the red channel. Copy paste it two times. In the second one set output red to green. And in the third output red is blue. Let me name these for clarity. The first one is position X, second one is Y, third is Z. First, we need the sign of Y. Let's use a function top. Connect Y to a function top. Set it to sign of red. And remember to set it to radians. And I'm naming this for clarity. Then we need x times b. Let's use a math top and multiply x by our value b. And a subtract top. The function top goes into the first input. And there we have the updated x, let's plug this into a reorder top. Input 1 is red. Input 2 is green. Input 3 is blue. And change this top to 32-bit float red green blue alpha. Ignore the error for now. Let's copy paste these nodes to reuse them. Connect the Y to the math top, to have B times Y. And the Z to the function top to get the sign of Z. And connect the subtract to the second input of the reorder top. 
and copy and paste them again. Connect the X to the function to get the sign of X, and the Z to the math to get the B times C, and connect this to the third input of the reorder. I'm also going to set the alpha to zero, just for fun. Now let's remember to multiply this by delta time. A math top. So let's multiply all of these channels by 1 divided by me dot time dot rate. Okay. So how do we actually use this? We need to add the delta position every frame to create some movement. We can do that with a feedback loop. Let's add a feedback in the beginning. Connect that to an add top. and add this to the loop. Assign the add to the feedback. And let's look at this go. We can clean this up by collapsing this down to a component. Select all, right click outside. Collapse selected. Right click it to customize component. We need two floats. One for our constant B and one for our delta time. Step inside it. Right click, open parent parameters. And let's type in this value that we used for B. And type in one divided by me dot time dot rate for the delta time. And let's reference the B parameter in all the relevant math tops. And reference the delta time in the last math top. A keyboard chop to reset the feedback loop. A null for position. Let's render this by instancing a line SOP. Align SOP. Change the position so it sits between 0 and 1 in the Z direction. Connect it to a geometry. A camera. And let's use a line material for variety. A render top. Set your resolution and pixel format. I using mono since I'm not using colors. And a null to keep this in the background. Turn instancing on. Use the POS to instance red, green, and blue.
This is fun and all. But wouldn't it be more fun if the line pointed in the direction they were moving in? Let's grab this output and call it val. And let's grab a math to find out the length of these vectors. Set it to length. Remember to mask the alpha. And set it to 32-bit float monochrome. And let's call it length. Under the second instancing tab, drag the veil to the rotate tool. And let's use the length to scale the lines. Now let's make this render a little easier to work with. Stealing a technique from Lake Hekeman. An object chop. Set the geo as reference object. And the camera as target object. Under the second tab, set it to measurements. And let's find out the distance between these objects. Let's use that value for distance near and far in the line material. In distance near, let's divide it by 2. And distance far, multiply it by 1.5. Now we can reorganize our camera more easily. If you want the particles to move quicker, sacrificing some accuracy, you can change this value in the time step. And this is a little bit static, so let's modulate our constant B with a noise chop. Turn time slice on. Change the period a little bit. Let's change the offset to 0.2 and the amplitude to something like 0.05. and assign that to our value B. And now we have some pretty movement. And of course you can use a point generator for initial positions. For some extra fun, A line. or a sphere. And yeah, play around with this until it's pretty. And yeah, make pretty things with math. On my Patreon, I also have the Lorenz system. Cheers.